Okay, so we'll be looking at uh, Golang, Golang language. So we're at play.golang.org. So by default, this is what you would see. Import FMT, FMT is the format package, which is used for formatting strings, numbers, etc., as well as displaying it to the console for the user to see. So what we'll be looking at today include values, values duplication, variables, constant, if statement, for, and the switch statement. So the first thing, this is a value format.print line, a low playground. So if we click on run, it shows a low playground. So let's look at declaring a variable about x equals 12, and then we want the system to print x. Of course, because this is a variable, you are not going to put it in quotation marks format.print. Okay, so it's printed 12 just after a low playground. So values duplication. So this x, which is now 12, we can just say x times 12, or yes, yeah, so that will be 144. Is 144 beneath here. But if we now want to change this to string, val x string equals root p, then we want to print, we still want to print x after a look playground. Okay. So that's it, good day after a low playground. But if we want good day twice, it will be x comma x. Good day, good day, all right. Now for those who are coming from the background of uh, C++, you are used to the printf statement. Golang also has a printf statement, except that you can use it to print uh, numeric values, it can only be used for string values. So let's, we've looked at values, values duplication variables, let's look at uh, constant. So declare a constant, let's, it will be C-O-N-S-T constant, let's say H equals 40, 40 for example. And then you can now have the system print um, H is what we put here. Okay, so it's printed 40. Uh, if statement, so let's declare variable back val x, you could use y, you could use anything, y, x equals uh, 2. If, now if you watch my video on Scala, the if else statement, you'll see a lot of similarity between Scala, uh, Golang, Java 2. So if x, now this is the condition you want the system to if x less than equals to 2, and the coily brace, what do you want the system to be from? Uh, you want it to print, okay. So x is 2, which fulfills the condition x less than 2, so it should print, it's okay. It's okay. So let's now put um, the else condition, else. But also we have 
uh, zone coily brace else what do you want it to print? Take note, yes, is on the same line as the end coily brace. It's not okay, so let's see. Let's put this at uh, four now. It's not okay. So we looked at if statement. So let's look at for statement. So what the for statement does, or like the if statement, like we just look at a condition, whether it's right or wrong, and then take an action. Now the for statement will continue to look until a condition is uh, the condition that is supposed to truncate it is fulfilled. If not, it will have a continuous loop. So you need to put a condition to, to break it. So let's say val x is for let's still pretend that I want to do it with all this. Now I'll now say for for x let me change this to four and then x equals to one. So anytime four is less than or equals to, anytime x is less than or equals to four, I want the system to one. First print, it's okay. And then um, give a new value to x, x plus one. Okay, so, so now I've placed a condition that will ensure that it will break. So once it keeps on incrementing the value of x, and it's now greater than four, it surely will not print, it's okay. Okay, so it's printed, it's okay, four times, one, two, three, four. By the time it gets to the fifth time, the condition x less than or equals to four will not be fulfilled because x will now be five, so it will not fulfill that condition, and then it will be okay. That's an example of how you break a statement. That's continuous loop. Now the final thing is switch. So let's look at the switch statement. Okay, so switch. Um, this, okay. Switch X. So before then, let's put command dot print. I don't want to print line, so. so. Um. The value of then whatever is x value of x and hold on comma comma all right so switch this is condition i've done this up uh, it would be i'll explain how this from case one command dot print one let me just quickly copy case two and three. So, it's two, print two, and then case three, case three. So let's look at peak val x equals one, comma dot print value of x is it's okay. Switch X, this is the end. Case one, 
from out of print line one, case two, three, 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 okay. Okay, so what this has done and um, the scenario can be useful for just imagine you are writing an application, um, loan application where an interest rate is due on a particular day. So if the date is, for example, two, okay, let me, let me do this now. I want to separate so that um, there will be space. Okay, so this this will come out better now. Okay, the value of two, it's okay, two. So imagine I'm writing um, a loan application, as I said, and the interest is due on the 14th of, so, on a particular day of the month, the system can now say once you slot in, or once the system picks the current date, maybe today is the second of a particular month, then it will be able to say the, your your loan interest is due X, which is maybe second of a particular month. So you are now bringing in this variable X, which is here, which you can actually tie to a function, for example, the date, current date, or current day part of a month, and then put it here into this um, into this print statement, and then have the system continually um, print it whenever it's due. So this is just um, a brief introduction to Golang language. There are a lot of um, packages in Golang, and um, maybe we would um, look more into other packages. Thank you for your time.